What should they look for when they're hiring people? Well, number one, you got to realize that the typical interview questions out there are like, they're all well-known and most people, just to put it bluntly, are, you know, what, what do you do when you're going through an interview? You're, you're full of shit, basically. You send your representative. It's like, you know, you always say when you're on a date with someone, you don't really know the person you're dating until three months. Because for the first three months, they send their representative. It's like their best self. And then only, you wait, what are you, I can't believe, like, well, oh, I was lying the first, you know what I mean? So, so, you, so there are questions, and what we do, especially, so there's, there's two sides. Number one, there's psychometric testing. That's actually my own proprietary test based on what I've seen over the years. This was I, something I, I created in conjunction with psychologists, um, and it's really intense. So it's 30 ways to ask the same questions to get to the truth of it. And then based on that, you see what certain competencies are, their predispositions, predispositions, for example. Someone might not be great for cold calling, but they'll be a world-class closer. They'll be the guy that you want to close. Other people not, might not be great at closing, but they're amazing at managing the long-term relationship, which is equally important for life of, that lifetime value of a customer. Some people are meant to just be more in face-to-face -face sales, others out there in the so you gotta know, so all salesmen aren't built alike. So this really sifts through all those people. Then through behavioral interviewing, you can really narrow that down even further. And then once you have those people, and here's this two other parts. The number one is onboarding. So when, you know, the, the biggest danger point for any salesperson is the first 30 days. They have to show up already trained. So I'm a big believer. Like I look at every company, say, what's your biggest pain point in sales? Attrition. First year attrition of a salesperson is the death knell of every sales force. If you can get a salesperson trained, onboarded correctly, and they don't leave that first year, you are literally at the top of the heap when it comes to sales, bottom line. The issue that I see, even with really successful companies, for example, I do a lot of work in logistics and pharmaceuticals and auto, they will have 60 plus percent attrition rates and they're still making a fortune. That's how insane it is. Sometimes I had a company that had an 85% attrition rate. They were hiring 300 salesmen a year and blowing through 85% of them before I got involved. All right. And they were, and they were a billion dollar company. Yeah. So just imagine the impact it has on a company's bottom line when you can choose who are the right people to actually hire. B, make sure they're trained to a razor's edge on your industry specific items before they show up, onboard them correctly and then also coach them. We also coach them afterwards, free of charge for a period of two years to make sure they perform. So to me, that's a formula for success. Of course, skill set, that's part of the training, but you gotta get the right person as well. Yeah, well, I mean, when, when, when you talk through like finding the right people, sifting through and you and your team, when you do, how, how do you end up identifying the right person do you, do you use a do you use a like a disc assessment assessments is there a certain no i use my own no I, it just doesn't work i found that it doesn't work a disc i think it's i think it's mostly i no offense i just think that you know a, a non my my system my test is proprietary just for sales so if you're looking to hire psychologists or, or, or office workers don't use my what i do i specialize in one thing to do better than anyone in the world that is i know salespeople. i know what how they tick and, and I spent years unpacking that into a scientifically proven formula of how you spot out them with the, this is just a predisposition to succeed. It does not mean they're going to succeed. They need to be trained, they need to be onboarded correctly, and it's that, that first year in, in the life of a salesperson. The reason that's so important is because of the way the belief systems work. Success begets success. When someone goes into sales and they fail in the beginning, they start to develop limiting beliefs about themselves, their capabilities, and it becomes a sort of self-defeating cycle here. So it's critical that the first experience that someone has in sales is a good one. Now, granted, there's many people that I made my, my living taking people who were failing and making them succeed. But if, it, if I'm talking just from the company perspective and an experience at a company, the key is, is you want them starting off on the right foot. So to me, the worst thing a company could do is to put people out there in the field or on the phone who are not ready who don't know what they're doing, A, it's destructive to your brand because they say stupid shit, they say, you know, they do stupid things, right? And, and, and two, you find people who could have succeeded with the right training and the right, if they had the skill sets to close and knew the product well enough, 
yet you self-sabotage because they start off with the wrong foot, they never get going, and that spreads throughout the sales force. And that's why you have so many subpar sales forces out there. So it's, you know, it's not like it's just finding the right person. It's finding the right person, making sure they're trained correctly, onboarded correctly, and this, especially that year one attrition is, is the crucial part for anyone who owns a company and also for, this, for you, the salesperson yourself, because the bottom line is, is how you perform in the beginning is going to set the stage for a cycle of belief building that propels you to being a top producer. Absolutely. I totally agree with everything you're saying. From a confidence standpoint, you can just totally crush it. You know, uh, I love that. I love that. That's really good. Uh, when, when, when you look, when, when, when we, I want to jump to the straight line for a second. For those that don't know maybe what that is or what that means, can, can you break that down and explain that for a quick second? Sure. So the straight line, that's the actual sales training aspect to what I do. And I think it's probably the most well-known system in the world. It's been, you know, obviously I'm have the benefit of a movie where Leo DiCaprio is with my logo straight line in the background selling me this pen, right? But what the straight line really is, it's a backwards way of looking at selling. Meaning rather than saying, you know, you know, it's like, okay, I'm standing at the front. What do I do here? I got to close this person. It's, Imagine a person that bought, what would they have to hear? What things would they need to know? What would they want to see before they said yes? So you say, what elements have to line up in another person's mind to get them to say yes? And when you have experience this, you'll quickly find out there are just a few things, it's not a million things. There are three things, core elements that must line up in every person's mind before they buy a product. And then there are a couple of ancillary things as well for the tougher closes. So that's one part of it, is what are these five core elements that must line up? What are the things that you have to say to essentially get them to line up? So the straight line essentially, imagine it's the shortest distance to two points is a straight line, right? So the philosophy is that at the beginning you have the open, at the end you have the close, and the straight line represents the perfect conversation. Imagine like an objectionless close where the person was a lay down. They were almost pre-sold before you ever opened up your mouth to speak. And as a salesperson, if you knock on enough doors or make enough calls, eventually you're going to find people who just, oh yeah, great. Oh my God. They're almost pre-sold to the easiest closes of all. So that represents that perfect straight line sale, an objectionless close where the prospect agree with everything you say. And the only problem is that those are few and far between. In the real world of sales, people have objections. They have questions. They interrupt you. They cut you off. They have concerns. So you as the salesman want to keep them on the straight line. They want to go off the straight line. So what we have is this methodology that gives you boundaries above and below the line. How far the conversation can stray off of perfection before you lose control of the sale and start spiraling off to what I call to Pluto, where you're talking about the price of tea in China or things that have no relation to the sale or down here to your anus, not a good place for salespeople to be. The point is, is that what I realized, there was this magic moment I had when I, I couldn't get my guys, to, this is 30 years ago, right? When I was trying to train my first 12 salespeople and I was already teaching an amazing system. It didn't have a name, but I was a great sales trainer even then. But I had switched from selling average moms and pops to the richest 1% of Americans. And the sale was infinitely harder. So it was a really tough sale. So the system I was teaching, the old one, yeah, it was good enough to close average moms and pops but take the same type of sale to super rich, uh-uh, the system broke down, it collapsed. So I had to invent a new way of training sales because here's what was happening. I was calling the same and I was closing 50% of the people I spoke to. My junior partner, Danny, was calling these people, he was closing 30%. Yet my 12 average kids who had barely clawed their way out of high school, they were closing zero. Same leads, same script, same phone calls, selling the same product. I'm closing half, they're closing zero. I, I couldn't understand it. And that went on for a month. And I finally cracked the code in this one evening and I realized what it was was something very elemental. It's really simple, actually. What it was, it's easy to learn, is that 
I had a certain way of talking, a certain way of looking, a certain way of, of, of the energy I exuded, that literally from the first few seconds of the conversation, when I get on the phone with a prospect or face to face, they would perceive me in a certain way. And based on that perception, which was that I was sharp as a tack, enthusiastic as hell, and an expert, most importantly, an expert in my field, they'd say, wow, this is not the average bear, not the average guy. And they'd say, this is an expert. And they would defer to me. They would let me control the flow of the encounter. Because what we do, we've been conditioned since we're yay big to defer to experts. We let experts guide us. We seek out experts to solve our problems. So by getting yourself into that, that position where you're perceived, sharp, enthusiastic, an expert in your field, people defer to you. And once they do, they essentially hand you control of the sale. Well, guess what? Now you can start lining up the elements in the same way every time. So I had this philosophy. I said to my guys, guys, don't you get it? Like every sale is the same. And they were like, what? Like, how could every sale be the same? I'm like, guys, every sale is the same. See, to me, because I was taking control, every, I could move it down the same path every time. Yes, people have different needs, different values, different pain points. They say different things, but the same core elements must line up in a prospect's mind before they say yes. And with the straight line system, once you're in control, you can then line those elements up in the same order every time. It's almost like picking the lock of a safe. The way you crack a safe cracker, cracks a safe. He puts his ear, spins it one way, click, he hears a number. Does he try to open the safe? No, he knows there's more numbers. He spins it the other way. He hears the second click. He spins it the third way. He hears the third click. And then he tests it. That's when you ask for the order. If he got all three numbers right, the safe opens. If it does, it opens. What does it do? Oh, damn, it's uncrackable. No. He goes back to the beginning and he tries the three numbers again. So with the straight line, we have a very similar tactic. We call looping. We loop back and try again. And every time you essentially run these patterns, you're cracking these numbers of his buying combination. You ask for the order is essentially seeing if the safe will open and when it opens, victory. That's the shortest way to explain it. And it's so simple to learn that when I teach it to companies at the people, like they have these about 30 or 40% uptick in close rate in a matter of days. That's just in days and much more after. It's a very simple system. And the reason it's simple is because it had to be, because my guys were basically morons. They were not NASA scientists. They were kids that barely graduated high school. They came from poor families. They could barely walk and shoot them at the same time. The, in the movie, it was very accurate. They were, that, they were that fucking dumb, all right? So because of that, I had to invent a system that was so simple and so intuitive, so easy to learn, that even a moron could learn it because they were morons, bottom line. Hey, you're making some big money, right? Your wallet's getting all fat. You're getting excited when you go to the bank. What are you gonna do now, right? You need to know some tax strategies. I got the video for you. Click on that with my buddy JD Frost, and I'll see you there. An individual tax return has a one in a hundred chance of being pulled for audit. If you make over a million dollars, you have a one in 10 chance.